Okay, okay. in this video, I'm going to go over how to do a quick and easy face swap. And there are different ways of doing it, and I'm going to try to cover at least the ones that I use the most. So I have this situation where um, in this wedding, we have these two sets of photos that are almost similar, um, almost the same. But this one, I think, has a slightly better framing, better cropping. Um, I, I'm not cropping him right here in a weird angle uh, or anything like that. But this one... Um, she has a better facial expression than on this photo where overall it's better. So first, uh, when you do a face swap is you have to identify what you want to bring where. So in this case, I want this general photo to be basically the base image and I'm bringing this small element into this frame. Um, so first of all, how do we get these photos together into one, into one single document? Uh, one quick way of doing it is I can grab the image um, out with this hand selection tool or whatever this is called right here. So just click and drag it to the new window. And if I press shift while doing so and I release, it will put this other, this other image as its own layer. And if when I hold shift, it's going to center it automatically into the frame. Okay, that's one way of doing it. Uh, another way of doing it is uh, pressing Option or Alt, or Option if you're on a Mac, Alt if you're on a PC, dragging this background layer to the new layer icon, and then a duplicate layer dialog is going to appear, and we're going to copy it to the other document, and now when we go back, it will appear right here. Another way of doing it is if you are using Lightroom and you have these images open, uh, make sure you have both images selected and then right click on either of them, then go to edit in and then go to open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, so that's how you get these layers together. Now, if these, f oh, if the files, if, if the frames are similar enough, uh, you can use Photoshop auto align system to automatically align the images so that it will be much, much easier to um, do the face swapping. So now uh, I'm gonna select both layers and whichever way method you use, it doesn't matter. Uh, I do recommend uh, putting the layer where you are extracting from on top and putting the main layer that you're keeping on the bottom. So in this, for example, I have, and this layer is locked, so I have to double click it and then transform into layer zero so that it unlocks and that I can move it. So for example, this bottom layer is the layer that has uh, her facial, the facial expression that I want to grab. And this layer is the overall, the image that I'm going to use as base. So I'm going to move this to the background so that it's below the layer where I'm only doing the small extraction. So the small extraction goes on top, the base main big picture goes below it. Now I'm going to select both layers. I'm going to go to image. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to go to edit, uh, auto align layers. We keep it on auto, select okay. And if the layers are similar enough, it's going to do its best to align them. And as you can see, it did that. Um, it's not going to crop it for you, which, you know, in most cases is a good thing. And then you, you put you later, uh, if like, if I, if you move too much, like I did, um, you're going to have this weird cropping where you can see this checkerboard on the, on the, at the background. You'll just have to come in and crop in manually. Anyways, now we have, again, just to make sure we Main have picture below it. And then we have the layer where we're doing the extraction above it. Okay. Um, why it's, it's this important? Because now that I have this, I'm going to create a layer mask to hide everything in the layer and just painting her new face. So I'm going to uh, hold Alt or Option while selecting the layer that I want to extract the piece from. In this case, this top layer, the layer where I want to grab her smile. and hold alt or option and then create a layer mask. What that's going to do is going to create a layer mask that is filled with black, which is which means that it's going to hide the effect of the layer. If you forget to do that, uh, it's no big deal. And, and if you only click on the layer mask and it creates a white layer mask, click uh, select the layer mask and click on command plus I or control plus I and you will hide the effect of the layer. Okay, so now that we have the effect hidden, we can go in here and start uh, just brushing in 
her new um, her the expression from the other from the other frame because these were automatic align I'm not thinking I'm gonna have such a hard time doing this so make sure you have a, a really soft brush this is gonna help hide the effect of you know bringing one frame into the other one pretty easily now make sure we're painting in with white on the adjustment layer and I'm just gonna paint in and some of this stuff might be a little bit hard to align you might have to like you know do some tricky stuff in here because again it didn't it didn't align perfectly I did move I'm gonna select a brush that doesn't affect that is not affected by the Wacom tablet size okay let's see this might take a while okay select a harder brush and I'm, I'm changing my brush size on the fly by holding on um, option and control on the Mac at the same time and I think it's uh, I think it's control on alt on a PC I'm not very sure okay and I'm alternating between black and white to either hide or show the effect of the layer by um, pressing X on the on the on the keyboard okay so I think we have a pretty good well this one is transparent hold on then I'm gonna go around the edge here of her blouse okay Okay, so that's pretty good enough for this demonstration. And that's how you swap a face when the layers were able to automatically align. Now, let's just say that for whatever reason, the layers were not able to align. Well, let me go back to how we had it. So I'm gonna have this layer. I'm gonna drag it to the other document. I'm gonna do it manually. Now, in order to align this when the layers don't align by themselves, um, so that I don't have to drag the entire image, what I do is I just, I grab a pretty big size so that I'm able to play around with it, uh, to be able to blend it better. As, as if you were seeing earlier, I wasn't just swapping off her face, I did some of her shoulders and stuff like that so that I will actually match her the new frame. And then I just delete the other frame and then we can manually align it that's when the auto alignment didn't work and the way to do it a lot of people do this by lowering the opacity of this new layer and kind of like going through it i don't think that's a good way to micro adjust this kind of thing um like it worked for like 90 it gets you like 99 percent there what what is best to do is to temporarily change the blending mode of this new layer the her face that i'm gonna swap in and changing to change the blend mode to difference what this difference does is that it shows with the invert the inverted color um what the layers look like so once they align if if they were to perfectly align it will show the real color but what this is good for is that without losing any, you know, kind of contrast or making it fuzzy, as you would if you lower the opacity of the layer, you're pretty, you're pretty good at being able to see um, the, the alignment. And when, especially when it's with faces, I usually try to align using the nose or the ears. If they, if you didn't move a lot, if if they didn't rotate her head, because uh the ears and the nose don't change sizes uh, as they change their facial expression. So her, her, their eyes might look bigger, their uh, mouth might get wider, but then the nose, the nostrils, and, and the size of the ears, the, the, the position of the ears, usually won't change. I mean, unless they change their face, their, their, you know, unless they rotate their faces. Okay, so I think that will be pretty good. Now I go back to 
the normal blending mode and here I have two options because I already cropped out most of it I can either just create a normal uh, layer a normal layer mask with paintable white where it's showing everything and hide just the very edge just like I did earlier or do it do the masking like I did with the other one where I where I hide everything and I paint in her face but once the alignment is done um, the rest is pretty much easy if it gets a little bit more complicated and you start you know and the sizes are different you know the angles are different what you can do is um, grab the, this layer where is it why isn't it showing me these controls oh here it is and with the transformation controls this is why having a small sample is better than having the, the entire image because now we can uh, tr start transforming the image you can do this warp transform where you can wrap a little bit of the edges and see like that to make them match even more if you want to just don't go too crazy with it because if you because if you ch change the shape of the faces you know something's gonna look odd if you change this too much and again, this is why making a smaller sample like I did earlier uh, is better in these situations where it gets more complicated than just, uh, you know, auto line the layers, layer mask, painting it with white or black. Um, but this is normally what I do in these extremes cases. Um, this is pretty much it. It's really simple uh, to do with, you know, if you have the right circumstances.